Hi everyone, uh, my name is Suran Chilingan. I'm a, a senior year engineering student and I'm very happy to present you today my capstone product. So uh, the main objective uh, was to design and develop a level measurement device which will uh, be able to operate both in liquid environment and also in air generally. So in fact, uh, the idea came after uh, years of being a volunteer in United Nations, in UNDP, and in Disaster Risk Reduction National Platform, and with uh, cooperation with one of the local uh, companies in Armenia, we have done, uh, within the framework of one of the programs, we have done a research uh, in Azad and uh, also uh, in our uh, re uh, water reservoirs and uh, find out that there are some challenges but the main uh, one of the main challenges was that there is no accurate uh, measurement system for the level uh, of water in the reservoirs uh, in our country uh, so basically there were some uh, traditional solutions which were used but with the advent of the 21st century and with the development of the technologies these solutions uh, started no longer have their uh, efficiency and also this came from the problem that they cannot work with the automated systems so uh, doing uh, research in uh, this kind of devices, um, I find out that there are some challenges that need to be considered. Like, first of all, it is accuracy, because uh, when you are doing a measurement with uh, measurement devices, uh, with the help of the measurement devices, they sometimes uh, have some difference between the result that you get and the true value. So uh, the next one is the maintenance problem because uh, a lot of uh, devices are not able to operate uh, during different environmental conditions like hot temperatures or cold temperatures. And of course the price. Uh, if you are looking into the advanced uh, level measurement devices, they are ranging from $6,000 to $12,000. So if you want to buy uh, these kind of um, measurement devices for all the reservoirs that are uh, available in Armenia, it would be, uh, it would be quite expensive. So um, doing a research, I've identified three types of devices that nowadays I've commonly used. Uh, first one is floating level gauge, uh, which is highly used in power generation, uh, power generation. So in liquids, they are basically measuring the level of the liquid and uh, their accuracy is from 1% plus minus to 5%. The next one is frequency modulated continuous wave radar. Uh, it is highly used in aviation and aerospace. So accuracy is from plus minus one millimeter to uh, 10 millimeters. And the last but not least, the pressure level transmitter, which is used in oil and gas industries. So to identify the pressure inside the tank. And the accuracy is from 0.1% to 0.5%. Of course, these kind of uh, devices have both advantages and disadvantages. So if we have a glance at floating level and a frequency radar, we can, um, I, I identified that they are very accurate they are not contact uh, and like uh, floating level is suitable for various liquids and uh, also the frequency radar can penetrate through obstacles. But uh, meanwhile, they are having some disadvantages because the cost is very high, the frequency radar uh, working principle is very complex and uh, also you need to precisely uh, set up them in order to not have uh, some issues future, uh, in the future. Uh, on the other hand, the pressure level transmitter has the disadvantage that it requires a direct contract, uh, contact with the liquid or with the object that you are uh, considering. So uh, taking all this into the consideration, I came up with the solution to uh, create a microwave based radar gauge. So why microwave? Because its working principle is very simple. So it emits a microwave and after the emitted microwave is touching to the surface or the object that you want, it reflects the microwave and the distance is measured. So um, 
Considering everything, uh, considering the devices available, their advantages and disadvantages, I've tried to overcome, the, first of all, the limitations of the traditional ones. So to have accurate measurement, not only in one environment, which was the liquid or air, but combine them so you can use the uh, microwave radar gauge in both air uh, environment and in liquids. So you will have a stability in different environments. So in this case, the, with the help of the sensor that I'm using, so I will talk about that, it ranges the environmental condition from minus 40 uh, Celsius degrees to uh, up to plus 85 Celsius degree. So measurement technology is very precise and um, you can use them in many industrial fields uh, and also it, it will be uh, market competitive. Uh, so here is the system scope. I have highlighted with the blue ones the um, results that I've personally achieved. So uh, as we talked about the environmental uh, environment and operation, uh, operating temperature, let's have a glance at the measurement error. So it's always 0.1% exactly, no more, no less. Uh, this is the advantage of the sensor that I'm using. And also the data output is RS485 uh, Modbus RTU. So what is this? The, uh, the RS-485 is a serial communication type and the Modbus RTU is a communication protocol made, uh, which is uh, highly used nowadays. So by combining them, you have a good communicational, um, uh, you have a good serial communication which also helps you to transmit the data in a desired way. So basically it gives you uh, just a number of the distance. Uh, also, the maintenance calibration is four years, so you just need to check once in a four year to be sure that the device working properly. And uh, uh, also, with the help of the research, uh, I've tried to find some insulating materials uh, which can help to increase the protection of the device up to IP67. Uh, so the 67, um, uh, each number has its own uh, description. The six is uh, the protection from dusk and the seven means that you can use also this device in water environment, like you can put um, inside the water this uh, 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 radar so it will uh, operate 30 minutes without any problem. So the, talking about the product, it is very complex. Uh, it is, uh, sorry, it is very compact, like uh, 15 centimeters height, uh, six centimeters uh, wide, and uh, the top of the sensor is considered the range zero. Uh, talking about the sensor, this is the main component uh, of the device. Uh, why uh, I choose especially this one? Because it gives 60 gigahertz measurement um, uh, distance measurement system, which is quite good for short distances. And uh, it works in many applications like lever measurement, co uh, collision avoidance, and uh, this is basically giving the function to uh, check the distance and to check the presence of object. Uh, this is the field of view of the sensor, so it illustrates the detection range and coverage area of the sensor. So we can see that the lobe uh, of the sensor of the radar is uh, quite narrow, from minus 10 degrees to 10 degrees, which means that the um, calculations will be accurate and there is no need to do any filtration. So uh, the main changes that I've done is uh, designing a board uh, because. Uh, we need to somehow connect the board with the sensor. So uh, he, uh, here are uh, four, pin, uh, four pins. Two of them are uh, responsible for um, power supply, and the other two uh, are for uh, having a better communication. Why uh, use two of them? Because whenever you are working in a noisy environment, the oscillations coming from that noise may uh, differ your results. So by combining two communi uh, serial communications, you will reduce the oscillation level. Uh, so here's the modified scheme. Uh, basically, the uh, RS-485 uh, interface, uh, the processor, uh, the power chain. Uh, and uh, here is the final version of the uh, board in 2D and here is the in 3D dimension from bottom and from top. So here's the mechanical dimensions of the um, sensor. So 
it is, uh, as I've already mentioned, it is very compact, so which helped me to design very complex, uh, uh, very compact box. Uh, and also, here's a typical setup for industrial level measurement. So basically, you can just put this uh, device on top of the tank or on top of the uh, uh, environment where you need to use this. So it emits a microwave, touches the surface, it reflects and gives the exact results. So also this uh, device has uh, one advantage. Uh, so you can uh, manually uh, choose the point zero, so reference, so uh, because it can like reflect from the surface or it can calculate the um, deepness of the entire tank and give the exact level of your water. So, uh, concluding all main changes, um, abort is a uh, designed program with the transmitting res uh, with a uh, Modbus RTU uh, protocol in order to transmit your data precisely. Uh, uh, they are very um, with the help of the uh, RS-485 uh, bridge to noise immunity, so noises will not affect so much. Uh, it is very useful communication protocol worldwide and also uh, by doing a market research we have uh, actually uh, reached uh, its protection up to IP67 standard. So sure, here are the testing results. Um, basically, uh, when you are turning the device on, it starts to sending its impulses and uh, it can show uh, via this interface, it can show the graphically how the distances are changing. It gives uh, in meters. So uh, whenever you are changing the device, it also changes the graph uh, respectively. And um, here you can see the result that every single signal sent per minute, but this also uh, is changeable. So uh, depending on the task, task that you are doing, you can send five impulses per minute, 10 impulses every five minutes. So this depends on the task and on you. So how would you prefer? Also, it calculates the average di distance by combining the distance it measured and, dis uh, and the level also. So here is the number of records totally. So 40 minutes, it worked 40 minutes. So 40 uh, records for 40 minutes. And um, uh, considering the future plans, so the device is basically working. Uh, I've tested it and it is usable in many fields. So first of all, the main goal was water reservoirs. Then uh, you can also use them in the tanks. Uh, so after these experiments, uh, I've tried to have a contract with a uh, hydrometeorological station in Armenia in order to conduct this kind of res uh, tests and uh, researches. So uh, in the future three or six months, I will be able to test this in the uh, reservoirs, uh, both in Aparan and both in uh, Azad. Uh, also, it is very useful in the future to use in tunnels, like for example, in Arpa Sevan. And uh, uh, another consideration uh, that I've uh, taken is mud flow and flooding level measurements. So for early uh, warnings, uh, imagine that the river is uh, always rising and going down. So the level needs to be measured uh, constantly. So you can just uh, put this radar, uh, connect it with the alarming system. And if some uh, necessary changes happen, it will give you alarm. And so the government and the hydrometeorological station will know uh, what exact steps sh should be taken in order to avoid uh, anything, uh, that anything can happen. So basically, that's all. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed. And here are my references. Thank you very much, Simon John. We'll be taking any questions from the committee. <coughs> yeah, thank you uh, for the presentation. Can you go back to one of the last slides where you had the data? This? Yeah, so I don't, I don't trust my eyes, but can you say what's going on here? It looks, the numbers just look strange. Like for example, this, uh, I'm gonna do some rounding, mm -hmm. but like 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 0.4, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 
some mismeasurement? Should this be a constant and it's not, and this is some error, or is there actually some level or distance that's changing? Uh, maybe I missed something, but what are we actually, what data are we looking at here? Like yeah. What is being measured? Mm, uh, okay, thanks for the question. Uh, like, um, I've done a test in order to be sure that the product is working properly. So first of all, I put it on the table in order to calculate the height uh, from table to the ceiling. And whenever I get the first result that it is like uh, 0 0.7 meters, after that I uh, reached the device a little bit uh, upper and then lowered it uh, a bit in order to understand whether it un uh, can can calculate the distance above or lower distances. So this is just the results after the um, uh, after the uh, device um, is, is changed. So if I put here, it will show uh, 1.7 meters precise uh, distance with plus uh, minus 0.1 percent. And if I put it, it will show the initial result, which was 0 0.7 uh, meters. So it is just depending where you put the div, um, device. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Another question: um, Have you considered either two other methods, just as a thing, uh, ultrasound or um, lasers, even on even on water? Um, the reason I say that is because at mm -hmm. you know 60 gigahertz, if the water is salty. Mm -hmm. it could absorb some of the radiation. I'm just wondering if you've even considered ultrasound. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, actually, this is not considered yet because like the main goal was to uh, solve the problem with the water reservoirs in our country. So the, this consideration will be taken after um, having the uh, expected result for water reservoirs, then for improving and developing more and more, these considerations will also be uh, taken. So this will be more developed than it is now. Yeah. yeah. So actually the product that I'm gonna sell will be uh, again cheaper, uh, like two or three times cheaper than in the field uh, than in, in the existing field so but yeah considering these factors it, uh, it will cost very cheap what was the cost of it? Uh, the like uh, the final cost may be around like from 1000 to 2000 dollars and sensor itself how much is it? uh, the sensor is uh, like quite uh, not not quite but a bit expensive it's ranging from three thousand to five thousand dollars but if you are taking into consideration to uh, like uh, work on the qu uh, quality of the device and to spread in our country uh, this is not a big deal so uh, we are selling the product uh, to be sure that in our country we have a good system so mm, that's all so the sensor you chose and you showed here was the price for that yeah. uh, uh, the sensor itself, like ranging from two thousand to four four thousand uh, dollars. But uh, actually, depending on the uh, version that you are using, because it has some modification, you can find the cheaper one. So this one actually costs two thousand dollars. Um, Could you please remind me what was the range? Uh, the, uh, the measuring uh, measuring range uh, from z uh, 0 0.1 meters to 40 meters. 40 meters. Um, I was I was play, uh, like designing another project, automation automated boat project for the um, for the um, 3D scanning of the reservoirs or the lakes, mm -hmm. which are like again solar powered, fully autonomous systems. So for that one, we were looking into these kind of sensors. There's a company called Blue Robotics. I'm not if you have seen. I'll send you the link. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so they have a, a sonar, actually. You know what is the sonar, right? It's 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 um, echo sounder. Oh, okay. So the price for their device is four hundred and sixty dollars, mm -hmm. and it's measuring up to three hundred meters, and you can directly hook it up to any can. You are, or you can get a converter for again the same uh, 485 
standards and, and so on. So um, if, if you are talking about the advantages and prices, I would recommend you to look into the market, what's, what's there, what are the real advantages and what are the real price. So if um, I, I'm not sure if I have seen any kind of a, did, did you have any comparison charts um, in your presentation? About the prices? Uh, yeah, just like a uh, direct, no. direct. Com so if, I mean, if you are talking about the prices and then making it a sellable product, it's really good to do some market research and have a slide or a comparison table. So what you have researched so far, what are the existing models, mm -hmm. what are the prices, and where is your product in that table, let's say. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much. Okay, when it comes to measuring uh, the level, mm -hmm. the uh, vertical installation I is very important. Uh, and uh, I know that ra these radars can detect uh, from various angles, mm -hmm. but have you uh, assessed the impact of non strictly vertical installation on the uh, accuracy uh, of the device? Uh, Actually, no. The uh, results are taken only doing by vertical uh, calculations. So this is also in a testing process. So I uh, haven't finished the testing to, uh, up to using different angles. So, but uh, I think uh, in the near future, this problem will be solved also.